Welcome to Care Coordination and Interoperable Health IT Systems, Expanding Access with Technology. This is Lecture C, Introduction to Telehealth. The component, Care Coordination and Interoperable Health IT Systems, is an overview of how interoperable health IT systems are organized to support care coordination services. This unit, Expanding Access with Technology, will cover the topics of mHealth and telehealth in regards to their use in the coordination of care. The objectives for this unit, Expanding Access with Technology, Lecture C, are to identify access to telehealth solutions in a variety of settings, compare models of telehealth systems, and evaluate populations served with telehealth tools and services. The concept of telehealth has been in existence in the United States for greater than 40 years and, by many accounts, as a way for physicians to reach patients at a distance. However, it did not come into greater acceptance until more recently with the development of enhanced digital communication methods. As high-speed wireless technologies become more cost-effective to established and as demonstrated models of success become more prevalent, telehealth continues to flourish. One contemporary definition of telehealth from the National Telehealth Policy Resource Center is the use of electronic information and communication technologies to deliver healthcare to patients at a distance, which shall include the assessment, diagnosis, consultation, treatment, education, care management, and or self-management of a patient. Telehealth employs a combination of electronic methods to communicate between the clinician and the patient with the goal of improving the patient's health. The methods are always two-way and are established from a distance. The physician and patient are not in the same location. Telehealth may be classified more specifically by its mode of transmission and then grouped into three categories, store and forward, remote patient monitoring, and synchronous telemedicine. We will now give examples for each one. Store and forward telehealth refers to the asynchronous storage of patient information that is later forwarded or transmitted for a clinician's assessment. An example of store and forward telehealth is the current practice in many radiology practices, especially where specialists are few in number. A patient's CT scan may be transmitted to a radiologist serving several regions, who then provides a clinical assessment and forwards the clinical report back to the patient's primary care provider. Remote patient monitoring, which is sometimes referred to as home telehealth, is a method of ambulatory care and is often used for patients with chronic conditions such as diabetes or high blood pressure. In the case of a patient with diabetes, blood glucose readings may be electronically transferred from their home monitoring glucometer to their primary care physician's office for evaluation. We will address the final category of telehealth, which is synchronous telemedicine, on the next slide. Although you may hear telehealth and telemedicine being used interchangeably, telemedicine is a subset of telehealth. Telehealth is the broader category. Synchronous telemedicine refers to the real-time communication which occurs between a clinician and a patient, typically through a video conferencing system. Special care must be used to ensure the patient's data confidentiality is maintained and that all HIPAA privacy standards are met. First, let us define telemedicine. You can pause the slides if you need time to read the definition. Telemedicine definitions range from the technical to the strategic. Perhaps the most detailed in regards to specification of technology is the definition used by the United States Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS. This definition states that, at a minimum, telemedicine must function to provide two-way, 
real-time communication between the patient and provider. Television projects became the mainstay of telemedicine through the mid-20th century. An additional notable project used black and white closed circuit TV to link the medical clinic at Boston's Logan International Airport to the Massachusetts General Hospital just across the bay. Concerns over Logan Airport's limited road and train access led to the project, and a paper published after doctors had seen 1,000 patients over the link was the first positive evaluation of the diagnostic equivalency of a telemedicine link versus in-person care. Upon the year 2000, two factors began to drive a fast expansion and exploration of new telemedicine applications. The first of these was the development of low-cost, solid-state devices with high performance levels for both black and white and color imaging. Driven by the consumer video camera industry, the capabilities of what once were high-cost imagers were now available widely. Ultimately, this new generation of devices outperformed their predecessors in many ways and at a significantly lower cost. Secondly, the widespread growth in the availability and popularity of the Internet offered new ways for computers to communicate and send digital files. With these two elements, a new generation of telemedicine systems and methods developed and began widespread application. Through the undaunted efforts of telemedicine advocates, the telemedicine report to Congress was updated in 2001 under a new governance that included many telemedicine organizations and practitioners. This resulted in a deeper analysis and focus on policy needs from a governmental level. The 2001 report identified five key focus areas for policy development. These were lack of reimbursement, legal issues, safety and related standards, patient privacy and confidentiality, and telecommunications infrastructure. The 2001 report made concrete recommendations and developed action plans for specific governmental agencies for improving the policy issues. While many of these recommendations were implemented and are still ongoing, the results are mixed, but some areas have shown progress. As we look to the future, telemedicine development is expected to continue. Telemedicine's flexibility and virtual encounter capabilities will assist us as continued pressure emerges on the United States health system for high levels of health outcomes, as well as rising patient expectations of access and convenience. Additionally, continued progress in the development of microelectronics and telecommunications technologies will also further telemedicine's future through lower technology costs, improved technical performance, and technical range of applications, and through improved patient safety. Now let's look at several use cases for how the more broad definition of telehealth can be deployed to assist patients with low access to treating clinicians. The Robert Wood Johnson Foundation funded a school-based telehealth program to increase access for high school children suffering from episodic depression after Hurricanes Rita and Katrina in 2006. The highly successful telepsychiatry was extended to include multiple mental health services and included the parents of the teens. Parents and teens met with psychiatric specialists from the University of Texas Medical Branch through video conferencing workstations located at the school-based telehealth sites. According to Rollo et al., telemedicine can improve other aspects of health, such as weight loss or lifestyle behavioral counseling. As such, they can be integrated into wellness programs. One study by Rollo found video consultations for virtual nutrition education and exercise counseling were a suitable component for a weight loss program when face-to-face -face meetings were not an option. These programs offer low-cost alternatives using a mix of technology for long-term improvements in patients' health. Now let's turn to remote monitoring, which is a more specific type of telehealth, 
where patients use home devices that report health statistics to their physician's offices, or in some cases, to the physician's mobile device. Cardiovascular disease is the number one killer in both men and women in the United States, and is the subject of much of healthcare spending and prevention efforts. A study was done to determine if implantable devices with remote monitoring used to monitor the progression of heart disease could reduce the time from a clinical event, defined as progression of the disease, to a clinical decision, or a response from the physician. This group of patients was compared with a control group without the implanted device with remote monitoring. The results showed significant improvements in the response time in the remote monitoring group, and they also experienced a reduction in the length of their hospital stay. This is a positive outcome for the patient, which also significantly reduces the cost of hospital care. This concludes Lecture C, Introduction to Telehealth of Unit 9, Expanding Access with Technology. In summary, the concept of telehealth has been in existence for decades, but as technology has become faster and more affordable, it has come into greater acceptance. Telehealth encompasses more than telephone, text, or email-only communication, and is intended to support or replace the typical physician-patient encounter. While telehealth is often used mistakenly in place of telemedicine, Telehealth is a broader term which encompasses clinical encounters as well as health education meant to support patient wellness goals. Both telehealth and the subset of telemedicine have the goal to improve patient care. This concludes the unit, Expanding Access with Technology. In Unit A, we discussed how patient and provider communication may be enhanced with mHealth tools. Again, the use of mHealth applications spans the continuum from wellness to illness, but may also be useful in the support of care coordination activities. In Unit B, we learned how data from mobile health tools, which are collected during a clinical visit or outside the clinical setting, can be used to support care coordination activities. Finding ways to integrate mHealth data into clinical workflows is a challenge and future work is needed in this emerging area. In our final Unit C, we covered the distinction between telehealth and telemedicine. Telemedicine encompasses more than telephone, text, or email-only communication and is intended to support or replace the typical physician-patient encounter, while telehealth is a broader term which encompasses clinical encounters as well as health education meant to support patient wellness goals.